my name is Arthur Eddington, and um, I conducted a project on the solar eclipse in, that took place in 1919. Um, I'm a British astronomer, and I was looking into testing Einstein's theories on relativity um, at the time. Uh, many scientists didn't believe them, so I wanted to conduct an experiment that was to prove them. Um, his theory of relativity um, would need to study very massive objects, and because the effects of that were so subtle, especially when dealing with space-time, so um, I had to come up with some type of way in order to test these massive objects, which seemed absurd at the time, and I focused mainly on the sun. Um, that was the most massive object in our solar system and therefore it would have the most noticeable curvature as compared to looking at a star. Um, I studied the position of stars that were close to the sun's edge in particular and um, this was made doable due to the solar eclipse of 1919 um, because that would give us the ability to look at these stars without a glare from the sun. And so what were we trying to find or do um, with this experiment? Essentially, we were just trying to approve Einstein's theory um, that it was correct over Newton's classical mechanics model. Um, honestly, it's crazy to believe that people didn't believe Einstein at the time because everybody, you know, I always believed him. Um, but I hear he gets really big in the current day. Um, so Einstein's idea was that space was not static. Um, you should consider it in another dimension. Um, in other words, time, and again, be, to be known as space-time. Um, and this is where um, we can view objects in space as being curved or bent, and that is due to other masses and their gravitational pull. Um, and again, we wanted to take the position of stars, and that was easy during the eclipse, and compare that to their normal position and then this would prove that it warps time and space-time and how we view those stars. So where did this experiment occur? Um, this was again on May 29th of 1919, um, the biggest solar eclipse. And um, so we took expeditions to Brazil and also to the island of Principe where the total eclipse uh, would occur um, in both those areas and we actually got to experience totality for six whole minutes and that gave us the ultimate time to pinpoint the locations of the stars. So um, again we've been researching on this for a while and it was kind of underlying at the time anything scientific um, because there were a lot of other events happening in the world at that time. So what other events were happening? Um, some simple stuff, the uh, rotary dial telephones were invented. Um, in the U.S., there were some amendments made to the Constitution with women and the prohibition of alcohol, um, all being big factors. And the biggest factor at the time and why science was kind of put on the back burner was that Europe was in the middle of World War One, and the beginning of the Treaty of Versailles um, was taking place many conferences which eventually ended the world war but that wouldn't be until the later years and also the formation of the league of nations so until we made our final discoveries and you know wrote our papers about it um the whole thing you know science and experiments and research and theories were just put on the back burner so who else was involved in my project um there were a few guys who helped me get to where and make this discovery. So of course Albert Einstein and his original ideas of relativity and his claim of space-time. Um, another friend by the name of Frank Watson Dyson, um, his experiments previously with being able to plot stars and yeah their exact position in our universe and um, that was what we used to determine the position and then compare it to what we saw during the eclipse. Um, and then also um, Sir William D. Sitter, um, he was the one who relayed 
Einstein's uh, letters and papers and all of his research to me um, in order for me to move forward with my experiments. So my role in this whole experiment, you know, I had a lot of help from other people, but my role was to thoroughly analyze the data in which um, people collected in both Brazil and the island of Principe. Um, I was deemed one of the only people who could understand Einstein's relativity um, because, due to the mathematics of it. Um, and so that was right up my alley. And then again, proving those general relativity predictions and they actually agreed with the observations and were proven that Einstein's um, theory of general relativity was true. Um, we saw that curvature and that the stars weren't in the place that they were supposed to be during the eclipse. And so, again, you know, and it also, the initiation of these experiments, you know, Einstein threw around the ideas, but nothing ever happened, no one took them serious because everyone believed Newton. And so it was me, you know, putting forth these expeditions and everything that got the ball rolling. And so there was also just a huge impact on the physics community. Um, it was deemed, you know, probably the most important eclipse in the history of science. And um, that was from the Europe European Space Agency. And um, Einstein was now known not only to scientists, but the entire world. He was famous, and, you know, due in part to me, but it was his ideas and his theory, which he knew before even testing anything. And then again, it also flipped Newton's world upside down because everybody believed him on things, and though he has proven some pretty significant points in history, this is one that he was wrong on, and that was crazy to everybody. And then it also just opened up a whole world of dealing with space and time and looking at new ways of analyzing both. Um, you know, we just, just I mean, um, who knows, they could get to the rippling of space and then things with collapsing and colliding of black holes, which at the time I wasn't too fond of black holes. And... You know, I would say that might be one of my greatest discoveries. You know, it, the theory of relativity is used so widely in modern day physics and so many things. And, you know, proving that and being able to prove, again, prove that theory, um, that was such a large discovery. But I did do a few other things um, throughout my time. Um, again, I was huge in astronomy and astrophysics and worked for Royal Greenwich Observatory. And my main thing was to pull from other scientists and their works and theories and, you know, try to actually test that and prove those um, if they didn't get very far. And many of the scientists I pulled from helped me um, make my, uh, my first theory a reality. And that was the first understanding of stellar processes. Um, that was a long time thing and I conducted many different points and later those were proven. Um, I also um, came up with the mass luminosity equation and it, that is a relationship between a star's mass and how luminous it is. Um, and other than that, again, I've, I've pointed to many theories on stars and speculated many things and each of those significant points I didn't get a chance to really test um, but they were later proven on down the road after my speculations. Thank you.